Hi, it's Tony from Cassette Comeback. Yes, it has been a while, but you know, life gets in the way. You know, real life stuff is, is what I'm focusing on, on getting done now, you know, because the world is a changing and uh, as Darwin said, those that survive are not the strongest, but those most adaptable to change. So I'm changing, I'm doing what I can and uh, unfortunately making cassette videos hasn't been a priority. I mean, primarily because I'm not buying any more decks. I've got all the decks I'll ever need. In fact, I'm probably going to sell some of them. And with the stupid price that cassettes are nowadays, um, I've got no impetus to really buy any because I've, I've bought pretty much all the ones I ever wanted to try. So what's with the new video? Well, the other day I answered the door and uh, the postman turned up with a box from Australia. Uh, and I thought, right, this is strange because I haven't bought anything from Australia. So I took it in anyway and I opened the box up and inside at the top was a letter from Daniel. Daniel? Thank you very much, sir. I have sent you an email. Uh, thanks for sending this. And basically he said he's a fan of the channel and he's sent me some stuff that maybe might inspire me to do another video. And it certainly has. In fact, there's probably a couple of videos within here. Now, after reading the letter, I saw that the contents were individually bubble wrapped and I thought, right, I'm not going to have a look. I'm going to do an unboxing video. Let's see what delights Daniel has sent me. Hopefully it's some stuff I've never seen before. And we'll, you know, pick a couple and we'll record some music on them and see what they are. So I don't know what's in here just as much as uh, you don't know what's in here. So actually I have opened it and I've got the letter at the top, but otherwise everything in there is individually. Let's see if I can show you sort of individually bubble wraps. Yeah, rubbish camera angle, but so I'm going to try and get the box all in there. I'm just going to put the box to the side here and let's go through and see what Daniel sent me. So let's go. Wee. Oh, there's a few in here. Right. So these, oh, these are all Philips. Right. Let's have a look. The Philips CD Master. Now I've had some of these, uh, but it depends what shells these are in. Yeah. These have got the really funky looking shells at the back on this one. Like I said, let's go through them first, see what's in there. And then I'll decide on a couple that instantly pique my interest and we'll do a bit further right the FS yeah it's uh, looking at the hubs there already looks to be the same forward hubs that we get like in the Bush tapes and the Amstrad tapes which I uh, really rate so yeah the FS90 so what else we've got we've got a CD extra so that it goes master and extra does it yeah this one oh I've seen these holes before again maybe it's it's forward again but yeah what are these made what does it say it doesn't say in fact that's possibly one of the blandest backs of uh so I've seen you know, two times 45 minutes high output I see hang on ah made in Australia because he did say there's an Australian theme on this all right made in Australia all right, could it be Green Corp? Is this an Australian made one? Yeah, made in Aus Hang on. Ah, tape made in Australia resembled in China. Right, so I get this now. Is this the same? Let's have a look. Yeah, tape made in Australia, manufactured, assembled in PRC. Right, got you. So, yeah, Daniel did say there is an Australian theme to these. So, I'm going to guess that these are probably Green Corp because Green Corp is the only tape company that I know of that. that made in Australia. CD Plus, again, is this Australia made? Yep, tape made in Australia, assembled in PRC. So, we've got a couple of Type 1s, a couple of Type 2s, Australian tape, assembled in China. Okay, let's go on for the next one. Ah, right, okay, good, goody gumdrops. So, yeah, Green Corp. Because like I say, these are the only people that I know of that that made tape in Australia. So Green Corp mastering cassette normal bias. This article will be replaced if, if okay. I thought my article was on the article on the back. <laughs> but this article will be replaced if found defective, blah blah blah. Okay, yep. Control what Sydney. So basically let's have a look. State of the art technology, precision mech, anti-jamming bodies, extra dynamic range, green corp. Australia, parts of Australia and Japan, China. So maybe Japanese shells, Australian tape assembled in China, but yeah. So that's a, a mastering cassette type one. See what else we've got in here. So, uh, 
Ah, this is another mastering cassette 90 type one. Is this pretty much the same type? Yeah, I think this, that's the same one. Okay, let's have a look what the next one is. This is a green coat. It's another mastering cassette, normal bias. Black, black shell on that one. Feels like it's probably older than these ones. Okay, yeah, anti-jamming. Ah, parts of Australia and Japan, Hong Kong. Yeah, well then again, Hong Kong is now part of China. So maybe when these were made, Hong Kong was still part of the UK and then it went to uh, to China in 97. So these might be older than 1997. Uh, and again, this looks like the same cassette, but there we go, brilliant. Right, let's have a look at the next little pile. Ah, we've got more green corpse, right. Mastering cassette, normal buy it. Okay, so they're both mastering cassette. All I can think is that the 90s came in a black wrapper and the 60s came in a green wrapper. So let's see if they are the same on the back. Yeah, they look pretty much like they say the same thing on the back. So we've got one in 60, one in 90. Okay, we'll start that with the other green corpse. Yeah, it's the same one again. And, ah, oh, right, so this is, yeah. So, okay, they did it, switched it around because this one, these ones, 90 degree, 60s are red, whereas these ones, 60 degree and 90s are black. Okay, right, fair enough, what, whatever floats your boat, but yeah. Okay, so uh, let's see what else we got. Aha, uh -huh, right, okay. Um, Opus, now I have seen these, right. Opus UD90, I can say black, oh, it's. can you see the shell? You can see it through there, it's almost like tartan. I've had tapes in this tartan like um, translucent shell before, UD90 precision cassette mechanism, let's have a look. Uh, again, this is just a brand, Opus is a brand of Green Corp. So highest demands, yeah, again, state of the art tech, like they say here, state of the art tech, Precision mechanism, anti-jamming bodies. Yeah, they keep the uh, the blurb very similar. So that's an Opus UD90. What else we got? We've got uh, got another Opus UD90, and then we've got what else? We've got the Dex HO90. Oh, 90. Um, Superior mole, uh, extra pressure pad tension, for better tape, compact, contact graphite liner, 35 screw shell of these, made in, in Australia by Dex Audio. I've never heard Dex Audio. Do you think they manufactured tape or they got it from Green Corp or? Let's have a look. All right, that, so this must be a fairly recent one because you know, this, this looks like something that you can still get, um, duplicated cassettes that look this, like this nowadays but uh, yeah fairly recent I reckon so what shall we have a look at let's let's pick two today right I want to have a look at one of these opuses yeah we'll have a look at this opus and let's have a look at this green cup let's like I said I don't want to do too many in one go so we'll look at these two I'm going to stack these ones back in the box I will unwrap these two and have a proper good look. There was also something else in there which he said uh, is something he's taped for me, an album. He said from one of your favourite Australia bands, hopefully it's one of mine too. Let's have a look. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, brothers in arms. <laughs> Sorry, I must have misread his letter because they're definitely not Australian. But yeah, uh, brothers in arms, possibly one of my favourite art um, albums ever. And he's recorded it on one of the Philips CD masters. It's a, it's a strange, unlucky album that because Brothers in Arms will just about not fit on a 60. It's just a bit over a 60. So, yeah, CD Master, and he said he's done it on. Oh, look, it's, it seems to have. Oh, the original. It's the original insert, chrome dioxide. Very nice, very classy that. And he's tipped on his CR7, so he's a man of taste because I have come to the conclusion the CR7 is my favourite tape deck. So, um, yeah. So, again, thank you very, very much for these little delights, Daniel, because indeed I haven't got 
any of these Australian cassettes. So let's have a proper good look at them now. Let's put these under the microscope. So high ball, wide dynamic range, yep. Yeah. Okay, lifetime, leader, high output. Let's have a look. So you can read the blurb there. I don't need to read them out for you. Acicular magnetic particles in the unique binder, okay? So I'm going to think that these are going to be made by Green Cut, the actual tape itself, rather than actually, you know, them buying tape in. If they make tape themselves, why the heck wouldn't they use them? So uh, let's open this up. Let's just tear the. Uh, he sent me two of these, so uh, I can keep one for the collection and open this one without worrying too much about the wrapper. Do, 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 which is uh, kind of stuck there. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. dum de dum de Good grief. Come on. There we go. Right, there's more writing on the back. Right. So, there we go. Very retro looking. In fact, it looks really good. Proper retro looking cassette, that. So, let's have a look. Opus cassettes feature state-of-the-art technology. Okay. To the graph to select the Opus cassette that best suits your recording needs. Yeah. Would have been useful if this was actually printed on the back of the wrapper and and not so far as you had to buy the thing and open it and then go oh you know what this graph says that it, it doesn't suit my recording needs mm, what a shame so it's the first uh, ln model which yeah okay well, what's nl never mind but anyhow Let's be honest, no one looked at the back of one of these when choosing a cassette going, mm, I'm not sure if that solemn molly is what I want. It just looks good. So, the cassette itself, yeah. Now, I've had other cassettes in this type of shell. In fact, quick clip cut, I'm going to get one. And we're back, yeah, this one. I, I, I got this sent, this as well, a Alexet Master C60. It doesn't look much. But from what I can tell, this is, like I say, it says loaded in Sweden. But this seems to be, if not the same, it's a very, very similar shell. It's just this one's slightly browner and this one's slightly greyer. But we're not here about the Alexet. We're about the Opus. So let's have a look what's inside. So there is pretty standard sort of J-card. On the back, let's have a look. Oh, we've got congratulations on your purchase of an Opus Premium Blank Cassette. Okay. Lifetime Guarantee. Music Way Corporation. So Opus is made by Green Corp, who seems to be Music Way Corporation. Okay, so yes, use your pencil. Of course, the pencil, because the pencil doesn't work. Mostly, you need a Bic, but the stereotype is that it's a pencil. Okay, so it's got a A side. Okay, so Opus UD. I mean, you can you see that UD, the arrows side here. They're they're very much trying to copy a Maxell leader on this, aren't they? So let's get a big because that is what you need to wind tapes on, not a pencil. Let's have a look at the tape itself. Oh yes, yeah, so that's a very nice, rich, shiny brown. I mean, to put it in context, Green Corp still do make tape. If you have the Splice It Capture C60, that has got modern Green Corp tape in it. And yes, people are subjected as to whether it's better than the Fox or any other modern new tapes. You know, what's the other one? The ATR. But um, I like them. I, you know, I like them and... Again, it, if I just go back to this, where was it? This one with these hubs. I always attribute these hubs to forward in Hong Kong. And you know, when we've, we've got these cassettes, which are saying they're made in Japan and Hong Kong, there's, there, there's gotta be some sort of link between, you know, Green Corp and forward. Or maybe the, these ones are not made by Ford, they are made by Green Corp, or they were at least in the late 90s and, uh, and noughties when these sort of cassettes with these sort of hubs were prevalent. But either way, they were very good cassettes and Green Corp always made good stuff from what I can see. So yeah, that's how the Opus loves. It just looks, it's got a paper label. 
But like I said, this is a very nice retro looking cassette. This is almost a style of cassette when you see all these novelties, t-shirts and heck, my wife bought a handbag with cassettes on it. I love the handbag with cassettes and blades. And this is sort of like a stereotypical 80s generic looking cassette and it's all the better for that. So it's got nice shiny looking tape in it. I've got a screw shell, a J card that's full of information. Oh, let's have a look. There's a little uh, something on the case. What does that say? Can we see, make out what that says? It says high precision cassette. So yeah, a lot of marketing on that, but there we go. It looks decent enough. And then this is the, I, I'm gonna, I don't know if it's older, but uh, like I say, Opus is one brand. Maybe it's an upmarket brand. Maybe, I, I don't know, but We've got this one, which is the Green Corp C90 mass mastering cassette. Okay. Again, we've seen all the stuff on the back and this is the Japan, Hong Kong one. So let's have a look at see what the mastering that's got a very high lip in it. This one, it's like right in the middle there, but, uh, okay. So mastering cassette, normal bias. Now, this looks like a generic, you saw sort of black shell that you get to, you know, that we had in the 70s. And we also saw fairly lately on the likes of all these Neil interview cassettes, etc. You know, it looks very much like one of them interview cassettes, but it's actually a very nicely finished shell, this. It, and it feels, it feels more substantial than these modern black ones which are coming on interview cassettes it does feel quite substantial that even though the the label's a bit you know it's not been put on with a lot of a lot of well skill there but uh, hey it happens maybe it's hand assembled but it does feel sort of solid that let's have a look at the old tape and that I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be if we put it side by side I mean the leader on this one is just a plain blue leader um just compare it to the Opus. Let's see if it's similar tape or not. Let's have a look. From what I can tell, yeah, they're so similar as as makes no real difference on them. The tapes, you know, very similar. So it's probably the same formulation, just slightly snazzier shell on that one. But other than that, uh, there's not a lot to say on this. So, but I guess we'll we'll find out when we come to the biasing. So let's have a look at the J card. Green Court Mastering Type 1, etc. Date time source. Yeah. You say you can you can label it twice at the front. Maybe that's why it's got such a, a high lip, because if you look at the difference in the size of the lip on these two, you can see it's much higher on this one. But uh, maybe that's just to put extra details in it. And the back is exactly pretty much the same as the front. So uh yeah, I mean what do you want? A very unoffensive looking cassette. But I guess the, uh, as I say, the proof of the pie, the proof of the pie is in the eating. So uh, let's fire up a deck. I'm going to do one with manual calibration so we can see if these tapes sort of calibrate at the same level to determine whether they're the same tape or not. But let's have a listen to a couple of Australia's finest. All right, so let's use the Dragon today because I want to compare the two tapes, see if it's the same tape in there. So uh, let's just, oh, I've got one in there already. Oh, look at that. UX Now Yearbook 81 to 84 mix. Yeah, I've been getting the uh, the Now Yearbooks on vinyl since they started coming out and I'm building up quite an 80s collection. Really nice stuff. Some of them are going for nuts prices now because they're only available for a limited time. But yeah, I recorded this on a nice 90s UX, which I think is a beautiful, beautiful cassette, both visually and uh, performance wise. But anyway, that's not what we're here for. Let's try the Opus first. So uh, let's get it in there and calibrate it up. Yes, I know people say, oh, you should use Robin Auto calibration instead of being a knob fiddler. Well, I like fiddling with my knobs. What can I say? Right. So uh, it's help if I put it onto tape and not source. Yes, there we go. Right, let's just uh, get that where it should be. 
Okay, that's nice. That's nice and steady, nice and level. Bias a bit high. Let's turn that down. But yeah, that's uh, that's very stable. You know, there's a little bit of flash in there. Let's. Uh, yeah, the bias looks stable enough. And just about that one little thing. There we go. And the uh, the levels look stable enough. So. Goody gum drops. Right, I'm going to record this, let's say, 3 to 5 plus dB. Uh, I mean, the only real song we can record onto this Australian made cassette is, of course, Down Under by Men at Work, the Australian National Anthem, but uh, unfortunately we can't because, obviously, for copyright. So I'm going to be using a bit of modern soul, and this is from Amy Lynn and the Honey Men, and this is called... Uh, I forgot what it's called. Emotional Mess. Yes, that's what it's called. Emotional Mess. Ah, it's like they wrote it just for me. Ha ha ha. So let's get it fired up. And let's record. Yeah, so, um, yeah, that was very good. Like I say, if this is the same tape on the insides of this that it is on the likes of the Bush and the Alba and the Amstrad cassettes, which were plentiful and cheap in the noughties and still pretty plentiful and cheap in the UK, then that's the performance I expect because that's really good tape. As far as I'm concerned, it's a superferric tape. This, to be fair, doesn't look quite as black as that stuff, but... You know, that was a really good performance. Sounded well, very comparable to Source. I think I noticed one drop out. But yeah, no, that was really good. Really, really good. So let's try the other Green Corp cassette now. First things first, let's see how this biases up compared to that one, which we just used the Opus. Let's see if it biases up the same or not. Okay, the levels are a little bit, well, they're, they're almost there. Just tweak the levels a tiny bit. Bias. Bias just needs dropping a little bit. Just let the uh, head find its place. Okay. Okay, so it needs a, a little less bias. But hey, it's, it's not a million miles away, you know. Different years, different formulations. I think this is probably a later tape than the Opus. There we go. 
base right, level right. Yeah, so not a million miles away, not identical, but then again, there's so many factors that could influence that storage, years, whatever. But uh, yeah, so let's have a listen to Emotional Mess again and uh, let's see how it it compares on the Green Corp Master Cassette. Here we go. So yeah, so for a pretty, let's be honest, unremarkable looking cassette, that performed really good as well. I mean, yes, there's, there's drop off at the top end that I could hear, but that's only because I was comparing it to the source straight away. So, you know, <laughs> that's the thing about, you know, the comparisons and stuff and three head decks and all that. And what we seem to forget is it's either a good recording or it's not a good recording. It's as simple as that. When you listen to it back, you can't compare it to the source, so it either sounds good or it doesn't. And that sounded good. No complaints here. The truth. Recently, I've gotten into something which um, I used to be into when I was younger, out of necessity, and then walked away from when new technology came i didn't want this old school technology anymore i wanted the new stuff and then after a while well years you know what i've come back to it again it's sort of like a bit cassettes what am i talking about bends you see i work in it in my day job and i have done for the last 25 years and pretty much everything nowadays i type you know, from, from the year 2000 onwards, you know, I had like a, a Scion Series 5 MX. Remember them? Little PDA with a keyboard. I've still got it. Amazing bit of kit. I thought I was the coolest, taking notes on that, not scribbling in a notebook. And then, you know, tablet PCs came along and you started doing all your notes in tablets. And now, now, now I take a lot of joy in getting a nice crisp notebook, getting a nice fountain pen, and writing, something that I walked away from for digital convenience, I've now come back to for the sheer pleasure of it. 
I enjoy writing now, I miss writing. I hardly wrote anymore. Now, when I'm in meetings and taking notes, I write. And again, it's not perfect. My handwriting isn't perfect. The pens aren't perfect. It's like this one, you know, this one's a nice one with a nice gold nib and everything. But, you know, it can be a little bit scratchy depending on the, the paper that it's on. But the point is, I guess, that what was old will be new again and it's like parallels we we have you know ditched the analog for the digital but then when everything's digital there's something satisfying about you know the sheer analog basicness of no booting up no storage needs no connection afterwards to download it no ocr you just put a bit of paper there get a pen and write and there's something about that and I just thought it was a strange parallel when I was thinking about that and, and thinking about cassettes how it is a parallel we as human beings what was whiz bang and brand new and awesome becomes ordinary then it becomes boring and we want something else and if nothing new has been created we'll go back to what was old ergo cassettes and records and in my case the joy of just writing beautiful writing with a pen in a crisp clean notebook so yeah sorry that's a little segue there so the opus ud and the mastering cassette yes very very decent i mean as far as you know type one basic ferrets go which let's be honest these could never be claimed to be anything more than that these are very decent. You know, if I bought these instead of a period D or HF or UR, I wouldn't have felt shortchanged. Yes, they weren't a perfect copy. Yes, you could tell there was a bit of high end dropout. Yes, there was hiss. But they're a type one basic ferret. Give me a type one basic ferret, which wasn't like that. And these were taking levels at like three to five as well. And I didn't hear any visible distortion. So these were very decent cassettes. And like I say, if again this is the same company that made the later bush alba and uh, amstrad cassettes and i don't keep going on about them, but if in the uk they're still plentiful they're still cheap and they are still well worth buying because the performance of them is super ferret level for you know in fact here bing go and watch that video if you haven't watched it about these but yeah these are very very decent cassettes and i will record some good stuff on them so i think in the next video i'm going to look at some of the type 2 that are made in australia and see what they're like i mean like i say the phillips said it was uh let me just check the the cd master it says yeah tape made in australia so you know a type 2 sorry that's type 1 ah <laughs> Yeah, that's it. That's the CD master. Yeah, that one again. Is it the tape made in Australia? Yep, tape made in Australia. So in the next video, we'll we'll try this one out and see what a Type Two from Australia. Ergo, it must be Green Corp. Sounds like. But Daniel, thank you again for sending these lovely gifts to me. And yeah, we'll we'll do another video yet. And in the meantime, I'm going to have a listen to how well you've recorded Brothers in Arms on one of these. Uh, cd master cassettes yeah yeah super duper so thanks a lot um i'll get another video out fairly quickly on this one while i've got everything set up but other than that i still hope that you're doing happy taping and you're enjoying your life and uh yeah take care until the next video bye bye